<clears throat> and welcome to episode 11, season 2 of Beardos Media. Now, in a time of such uncertainty and financial instability, we're going to be discussing a very interesting topic. Employed, self-employed, entrepreneur, who do you work for? Straight after this. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, episode 11. Mr. Waris, are we good to go? We are good to go. We're always good to go. We're bored to go. Come on, let's do oh, it. 2021, yeah, baby. Let's yeah, some kind of voice transplant or something. You sound very, a little bit extra sweet. What, what is that? Oh, it's a, a partially, partially, probably because we've got a really special, sweet guest coming on later today. So always motivating us. Well, yeah, no, um, I don't think we should keep our guests waiting, to be fair. I mean, it's, it's such a fascinating topic, and I, and I don't want to start this without our special guest today. So should we get him straight into the studio? Let's have him. Oh, good evening. Well, it's long. Thank you, Ali. Thank you, Majid. Welcome. Welcome to Braders Media. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for the opportunity. I've been watching you guys for at least, I think, a year, possibly. We were Maybe. actually discussing that. I sent Ali a, a, a something today, a screenshot of uh, renewing something, one of our subscriptions, you know, when, where we post stuff or I think right, okay. main renewal or something. I said, look, it's been a year already. It has, yeah. It's been, it's been, it's been a heck of a year, hasn't it? A momentous, a momentous wow. year. Wow. Yeah. Tell me about it. Well, you know what? We're I, in 2020. Maybe five years in the last 12 months. <laughs> Has it been grown, actually? <laughs> Or is the beard is the beard where it is? I think his beard's gone shorter in the last twelve months. We're getting there. Get, get him back. Get him back. <laughs> so, Flaz, my million-dollar question. Well, trillion-dollar question. Um, who do you work for? <laughs> I think whether you're employed or whether you're self-employed or whether you're a business owner or however you see yourself, I think how you do something is how you do everything. So. You, know, you work for yourself, your own intention, you know, what your beliefs are. So even if you're self-employed and you think you work for yourself, you know, you'll always work, you know, if you take it that literally, you're working for a customer and you're working for a client or you're working for a particular deadline or you, or in some cases, like I sometimes work for uh, our staff, our employed staff. So for most of the things in terms of it's your intention it's it's you know it's where you are in terms of your mindset of um, of why you do things, what your purpose is, what's driving you, what's getting you out of bed. And if it was down to me in terms of my own motivation, sometimes you know I'll shrug my shoulders and stay in bed. But <laughs> there's got to be some there's got to be some driver. And I yeah. think um, you know what I, what I will say is. Uh, in terms of the question, in terms of employed and employed, an employed mindset and an entrepreneurial mindset, there's going to be some generalization here, and and I think with generalization, generally there is going to be, you know, we, I think we're, we're you know we're, we're gonna you know, we can't brush everybody with the, or we can't paint everybody with the same brush. There is going to be some generalization, and there is going to be you know we're going to be talking from our own experiences and our own viewpoints. And, you know, in some cases, I've seen entrepreneurs, you know, who don't behave like entrepreneurs, as you would perceive. And at the same time, I've seen individuals who are employed, who have got an entrepreneurial mindset. mindset yeah. And if you go back to, you know, the, you know, your, your 
uh, you know, one of your descriptions in the uh, in the promotion post that you did, you talked about entrepreneur entrepreneurs, and uh, and I think we've all possibly at one time have have googled the word entrepreneur. What does he mean? And it to- talks about you know the word comes from the French definition, or it you know it originates from France, and then there's a link to uh, Greek, uh, you know. It always links to either Latin or Greek, and it talks about an adventurer, possibly somebody who grabs the opportunity, who takes control, and then and then the current English definition is about risk. And every time I, I hear the word risk, I think Majid Waris, but it's not that risk <laughs> that we're talking that. about. <laughs> so you've dominated that word, Majid, but it's not that risk that we're talking about. But it's about risk for. Uh, in, in some sort of business for profit. And it either talks about managing and organizing um, and creating a business or starting a business for ultimately a profit. But that whole, and as, you know, as, as you know, uh, the, the English language is very rich and, and it changes. And from my perspective, I, I focus on the word entrepreneurial mindset as opposed to an entrepreneur, even though in, even though in some descriptions I do call myself a social entrepreneur, but it's all about the mindset for me, Ali. Okay. So I, I don't think I, I don't think I've answered that question in an easy manner, but I've thrown a lot of things back at you. Normal of Safra, Ali. There isn't any Safra, is But Safra, I mean, if we speak about mindset, um, you're obviously where you are today. Uh, and, and I'm sure our listeners would, would love to look you up because there's, I mean, I looked you up um, and there's just a vast uh, number of companies, umbrella companies, groups, projects. And if anybody asks me, you know, what does Safraz Bai do? I think the short answer is everything. Now, obviously, there's a much longer answer, but you wouldn't have set off like that, would you? Um, if you take yourself back in your yeah. timeline... I mean, unlike most most people who are in business, I I my plan wasn't to go into business. Um, I was looking at a career in um, banking and financial services, and uh, so you know, if you asked me when I was at school or even at university, it wasn't about business or setting up a business or you know or going out and and you know making millions. It wasn't anything like that. It was about about um, um, doing well in a career, um, academically picking up in terms of qualifications, and it was about education and qualifications and having a what I would call now a sort of a, um, um, a working life balance. So there was an element of two point three kids say. A semi-detached house uh, for me in Hodge Hill at the time, um, and a job, and maybe a decent car. That was it. It wasn't about you know kids these days now all about because you know we weren't exposed to exposed to Gary Vaynerchuk's and all of these people out there, and it wasn't it, you know. So my my thinking was all about progressing in a career and doing well, and having that balance in between religion, life family and all of those and i'm not saying i've lost all of that but it was about that i'm trying to do the same but in a slightly different way okay but for me sorry go on, sorry. sorry yeah sorry. sorry to put you short there i'm gonna i'm just gonna jump in and ask you a two-part question here you mentioned two things you mentioned um as most probably most people especially from an asian background we're all expected to be professionals of some kind when we're younger whether that's an engineer an accountant or a lawyer or you know a white collar uh, kind of a, a profession, and you just described somewhat of the same. So, mm. two part question for me is number one: How do you define the term entrepreneur? Because Ali and I have had a discussion in the past, not recently even, but in the past, and Ali's kind of um, reiterated something that Gary Vaynerchuk once said. We'll come back to that later. But how do you define the term entrepreneur? And what is it that motivated you or what was responsible for the transition from becoming uh, a professional in a particular field, working in an employee, 
capacity to being the entrepreneur? I said at the beginning, the, the word changed as well. And there was a point in time when this word had a, a meaning which I didn't want to associate myself with. Um, so there's an element of a negative meaning. And, you know, there's also, you know, I, I used to have a belief where, you know, you don't call yourself an entrepreneur, it's what others call you. And I think we've had that possible discussion as well, Majid, when uh, at one of our events. So, um, mm. and, and, and again... We definitely had that discussion I'll, relating to the word expert. Expert and expertise, yeah. yes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, so I've had a discussion, probably not with yourself then, with somebody about the word entrepreneur and do you call yourself an entrepreneur mm. or does somebody else call you an entrepreneur? Mm. So if you yeah. think about entrepreneurs, for me, I'm still from the old school where I still think about Richard Branson. But if you talk about maybe to somebody else, they may think about the owner of Gymshark, Ben Francis. Yeah, they may think of him or they may think of somebody else. It's probably not likely to be uh, Richard Branson for them. But when you think about Richard Branson, you know, the, the view that you, you, you get in your mind yeah, is somebody who's setting up things and letting other people manage. So it's about organizing, it's about creating, it's about, you know, it's about uh, grabbing opportunities and then really setting, setting, setting the organization up, the enterprise up and letting managers manage. And that's not far from what my thinking is. It's about you're the igniter, you're the creator, you're the, the person who energizes, transforms, but somebody let somebody else do the transaction, let somebody else stabilize it, let somebody else work on it, but you push the boundaries. You're there as the pusher, you're there as the creator of, of the change, the innovator, but let somebody else conform and so forth because the entrepreneurial mindset or the entrepreneurial skills are might not necessarily be the right skills for managing so you have a manager's skill set an employee skill set as an example or an entrepreneur and most of us have probably come across the fact that entrepreneurs um, are probably not the best people to manage the business because from their from their perspective they're about the change they're looking at again Elon Musk is one of the you know, again, I can see one of the descriptions, Elon Musk, is some, somebody's mentioned Elon Musk. But entrepreneurs are also people who sometimes have um, attention span, span deficit or they've, they, they focus on the move from one thing to another. And they're about shaking things up, creating things and, allow, and, and maybe pushing, pushing the boundaries, pushing things and letting somebody else pick up and 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 manage and stabilize and and do the transactional stuff and and um, and, and and that's where my sort of thinking is in, in terms of that definition um, so if taking if, that initiative was, taking that question. risk if i was to pose the question can somebody who doesn't have a business in which they employ people or managers or staff Let's just say, you know, it could be any kind. It could be a consulting kind of a business. And they have multiple businesses where they may be innovating, they may be pushing the boundaries and doing something new. Could they not be classed as an entrepreneur in how you define entrepreneur? I, I think for me, I mean, I, I also have a, this business owner mentality. You know, what is a business? A business is, is, is one that has, uh, in my case, uh, in, in terms of my understanding, is the one that it can operate without you. So if the business can operate without you, then it's a business, then you're an entrepreneur. Otherwise, you've created a job for yourself and you're self-employed. You work for yourself. I mean, going back to Ali's original question, then in that respect, you're working for yourself, you're self-employed, and you're, you've bought yourself a job or you've created yourself a job. If you create a business that should be able to operate without you. That is what an entrepreneur is. You're creating wealth. You're creating opportunities. You, you're the initiator. But if you're doing the job yourself, and, and, and in a business, you will have a role. Hmm. But you, in my case, I, I wouldn't regard them as an entrepreneur. It's like, for example, you know, self-employed, a taxi driver is self-employed. You know, somebody who's a courier driver is self-employed. They're not necess They're not entrepreneurs in terms of how you and I would perceive an entrepreneur mm. yeah so then they're, they're yeah. not entrepreneurs but they yeah. are self-employed yeah. 
and they would go under the um, uh, the national statistics in terms of self-employment. A contractor, an IT contractor, you know, working for a large organization potentially might be self-employed or will be self-employed in some cases. They'll have a limited company or they'll transact to that company, but they're not entrepreneurs, but they are business owners in, in, in terms of the legal okay. definition. But in my definition, I don't I wouldn't regard that as a business. Yes, yeah, but legally they are. Yeah. I think that's one thing that's really changed in, in, in probably recent years is um, the, the number of people that we see coming up with that mindset to be an entrepreneur, to have, you know, what they call passive income or businesses or uh, income revenues that run without them. Um, I mean, if we go back to our day, which I think is probably different for all three of us, right? I don't. I'm assuming we're not all the same age because, you know, I think I think you're the youngest probably possibly Ali. I mean, if I if imagine it doesn't mind me saying that. Yeah, no, he is. Yeah, but yeah. I mean <laughs> I think the further the more that we go back, um I, I agree with you. You know, people came out of school thinking, I'm gonna land a job, I'm gonna have a nice income, a nice salary, I'm gonna have a house and a car and mm. paid holidays, um, and I'm set for life. You know? Um and as we see over the years, that's that's largely faded. You know, our youth now, they're not of that same mentality. Before, you'd have your Richard Bransons or your mm. you know, uh, Elon Musks or whoever, but that was a rarity. You know, it wasn't very often that people would think past a high salary job or wearing a suit or driving a nice car. Now, however, everybody wants to have a pop, don't they? I think... Having a okay. nice job or a, a stress where you can clock in, clock off, go home, it's, and I think someone mentioned it, it is underrated. It's not, you know, it doesn't get that same respect that it once used to. You know, even the banking sector that you mentioned, in, in our day, if somebody worked in a bank or was a bank manager or, you know, was a a role like that, it was, it was respected. It was held in high regards and high esteem. Um, but I think we've seen that change quite a lot in recent years, haven't we? Um, I, I think a, a lot, a lot of it, a lot of a lot of people start off in an employed capacity because of this perception of risk, and we talk about security and stability. And what they what we realize is that the world has changed, and it's not about you know working for somebody else is less risk, and it's it, it's not it's not about that at all now. You know, you could be in a situation where things are not in your control at all, and that so so that parity is it's 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 completely sort of it's completely changed. So a lot of it previously was about risk taking, and it's about perception of risk, yeah. and 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 that world isn't 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 the case at all. It, it's, it's not the case uh, now for people. It's about an informed choice. It's about understanding their own traits. You know, part of that is about their own knowledge, their skills, and their behaviors. For me, these are the three three areas. And there's a fantastic book uh, from um, a chap mm. called Michael Michael Gerber, E Myth Revisited, and he talks about the technician, the manager, and the business owner mindset. And what you find is that people sometimes go from a technician if they're very good at a particular task. They think that that's enough for them to become a business owner, or you know, to start a business. There's another or, book which I would recommend people. Oh yes, <laughs> yes. yes, yes. Thank you so much, Mike. Fifty-two bytes. Uh, Fifty-two, bytes, bytes, 52 yeah. bytes of business wisdom. And 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 again, you know, in my book, I, I thank you for for, for mentioning that, Majid. But I, I talk about are you cut out for business? And what that basically means is uh, that there's an element of mindset. And, you know, if you talk about knowledge, you talk about skills, you talk about behaviors, you know, how, you know, you know, you might be, you might have the behaviors or the characteristics, but you may be lacking in terms of either knowledge or the skills. And yeah. to a certain level, it's really where you fit in as well. It's, it's, it's where you fit in. Technicians, in my eye, in, in, in terms of what I've seen, they're very good at what they do. The professional in terms of what they are, they have the expertise level, but doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be a big business owner. To run a business these days, 
you know, most businesses, there's a sales element to it. Again, you know, there's an element of business development. You've, you know, there's no business without a customer. You've got to get customers from somewhere. You've got to understand marketing. You've got to understand sales. You've got to be, you've got to be able to, uh, and there's so many pitfalls in running a business as well. And it's all these big pitfalls that we, we get, we, you know, we, we've got to be informed about. And it's not just about compliance. It's about how you set things up, you know, where, you know, what your intentions are with the business. And it's having that element of where is this going? What your plans are, what your growth is. You know, we start off people, you know, there's a lot of people who have hope. They have motivation. They have wishful thinking. They have positive thinking, but that's not necessarily a plan or a business plan or a strategy. Hope on its own or motivation on its own isn't on its own going to get you anything. Just because I have the motivation to run the marathon, as an example, it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean you know you can you can gym me up as much as you want, Ali. I'm sure you can. Uh, sure. uh, and, and say you can do it, you can do it, you can do it, and I can believe that, but it doesn't necessarily mean I can be, I can do it. So what I find, you know, when I'm talking to people, I'm always trying to slow them down. And, and and I'm I'm sort of not necessarily discouraging them. I'm just trying to make that haste that they have a little bit slow. I'm just trying to slow them down, just to make them a little bit more conscious, more aware, more sort of um, informed, yeah. and 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 just think about it. There's a lot of people who seem to be jumping into certain things, rushing into things. It's that element of, you know, this is this is my escape route. This is the route for me to to do well and obviously you've got your elements of you know social media you've got all your stuff that's out there on tiktok and various other things which give that view that this is easy and, and there's many a times where and i think it's probably it's possibly the same where you think you know god i just wish i you know had a job and um, because you're constantly it's constantly on your mind and you know you can't switch off even with the best will in the world, you want that work-life balance and so forth. Yeah. It's always there. And, you know, when I'm looking at certain things, even when I'm looking at, you know, a, a TV program, you just can't switch that mind off to completely relax. I mean, I can't it's anyway. Your mind, <laughs> yeah. It happens. And, 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 and you can't switch off. I mean, I'll, if I say, if I come into your uh, sweet center or, or, or dessert place, I'll be thinking, okay, how, you know, how's their business doing? You know, oh, and I'll be looking at the staff, you know, what's their customer service like? You know, what yeah. EPOS system are they using? You know, what tools have they got here? Or what's their signage like? And even if it's nothing to do with my business and I've got no yeah. intention of going into the Who dessert uh, <laughs> certificate. I've got no, I, I, I start looking at, okay, what training have they, what have they done? What's their signage like? What's their health and safety? What's their cleanliness like? For yeah. no reason, for no, you know, it's not, yeah. you know, I've got, you know, I've got, I've got no, no interest in that, but it's just, that's the mindset that you are. You're always looking at these things and thinking, okay, what what can I pick from here? What can I learn from here? And it's it's that element of it's 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 it it's just becomes part of your DNA. DNA. The, yeah, yeah, it becomes it is there's a balance that we have to strike the, the risk versus reward in being self-employed or even being an entrepreneur. Because I think in times of austerity, like we we're going through now, some challenging times right now. Uh, every business owner, whether they class themselves or whether they're classed as entrepreneurs or not, are feeling, you know, anxious. There's a lot of uncertainty. A, there are a lot of different types of challenges. Those people who have put more on the line in terms of risks. I'm not just taking talking health and safety here. I'm talking financial risks. You know, you've got outlets, you know, the the uh, overheads that, you know, that you've got to pay for, the stuff that you've been having to pay for, the long-term relationships you've built in your business and even the clients that you've been servicing the, the needs for. And on the other hand, even businesses like mine, which are consultancies, you know, soon you just find yourself maybe on the flip side because a, tr a traditional business which serves its customers uh, like Ali's uh, perhaps, you know, you have a physical business, you've got employees, you're servicing the needs of the customer. Uh, and some retail businesses, or maybe not Ali's because obviously, uh, mashallah, Ali's doing really well even during these uh, tough times. There are businesses which have failed. I've, I don't even know if we can say failed or not, or they've just kind of if not survived. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, but there are businesses which have 
kind of flourished like consultancies like ours we've been inundated with service requests for risk risk strategies and um you know covid-19 risk assessment safe operating procedures so it's flipped itself on its head somewhat so it, 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 there is a risk versus reward i guess uh, saf when you're mentioning when you're when you're a business owner irrespective of which era or which period of time we're living in there's there's a, some people thrive off it some people kind of it makes them nervous i guess for them they're risk averse types of people and you know for them it's better to be in an working in an employed capacity but saying that people in employment are feeling the pinch now as well there's just a lot of uncertainty surrounding that so you know there's there's so much uncertainty with this kind of uncertainty self how have you managed to work through these tough times and what advice would you give to biz business owners I mean, because you you have a conglomerate of businesses you know the pathway group you've got you know the the think fest which runs the events you've got pathway to grow chutney and chat networking events you know coffee net and all them you've got the bame apprenticeship awards under think fest i guess uh you've got the the apprenticeship side of the business under pathway group you've got your training provision which you provide for employees or employees you've got domiciliary care you've got you know all sorts of businesses with so many types of businesses as who i would recognize as an entrepreneur how have you had to assess things and how have what kind of advice would you give to people who are running businesses i think this is where we go back to the original aspect of it in terms of are you managing it or are you the one who's created it and enabled and you know it's about it's you know this is where you need a team of people around you and you need to be able to rely on those people and, and and those individuals and you need an element of people who are technicians an element of people who are managers and then you've got elements of obviously you know who the entrepreneur and some people have got a little bit of both in terms of the this you know you, you know if I may back go back to uh you know you mentioned Ali Ali's a wealth creator you know he's created a business um you know you know he you know he that business is as she said thriving is is a wealth creator your uh, if i may say magic your a or what I would call an enabler you 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 help people you enable the business owners to whether it's through your sales coaching whether it's through your uh, consultancy compliance you know you're the person who protects people in terms of the hidden pitfalls um you know the company business structure the compliance element of it the advice and guidance the signposting and you you get you're navigating you're the what I would call a, a key person in terms of uh a power team of business owner would have business owners you know lack certain skills and and if i may talk on behalf of the wealth create uh, the creators you know like like ali ali will be good at the ideas that he'll be good at in terms of initiating he'll be good at in terms of gene up the people selecting people getting them and allowing them hopefully the freedom the space to let them do what they what there is but he needs people around him and he's these people dictator. around him I wouldn't say that about Ali he's a dictator he's a dictator <laughs> he's a I, micro manager you got to be a bad habit the first by it seems a very I always like to micro manage and it and honestly it is it's proving so difficult to be able to step back you know when you when you when you're talking multiple sites or multiple branches or or whatever the thing that i'm finding hardest is to stop micro to you know not have to oversee every little element um but it has it's, to be done it's, it, it's I, i don't know i don't know ali i don't i wouldn't i wouldn't say I it has to be done to, i think you need some coaching from saf saf take me on the point i wouldn't i wouldn't say it has to be done i think as business owners we have we need attention to detail i i i don't you know attention to detail and have a microscopic view is there but that's different from uh, from micro managing you know mm -hmm. you've, i i personally think you need to give people space you need yeah. to you need to you need to coach as opposed to um micro manage so there's an element of let them work out their own answers it's yeah. about sometimes making them aware of how you're seeing things and what your perception is and really for for, for one of your staff to start thinking of how would ali my employer uh, view this And a, and and a big part of that is about systems it's about processes it's about structure it is about training and it's about training the staff but micro managing you can't scale you, you there's you know you you'll find scalability it becomes very difficult 
So you're, yeah. there's going to be a ceiling in terms of the growth of your business. So you might be able to... Happened. Sorry? This is, sorry. This was the, inter- the conversation that I was having with Majid possibly just a few weeks ago is that now naturally in my mind, um, I-, I see it as climbing stairs or a ladder or whatever. So you start off as employed. Uh, you gradually work your way up the chain, supervisor, assistant manager, manager. Eventually, you make the transition into being self-employed. So you start to work for yourself. The next step is to be able to be what we call the classic term entrepreneur. So, so for Majid, for example, he's gone from having good jobs and making loads of money for other people to thinking, hang on, I can make some wealth for myself. You know, let's, let's start my own name, my own company. I will be what people are paying for. And that's happened. And, and I think that's the stage that Majid's been at for a while. And we were having this conversation and saying, look, why don't you, you know, why don't you now expand? But in order to grow, you've got to step back. It's a bit of a cash 22. Yeah. You know, you're what everyone's paying for. But hire more consultants, have more people working for you and doing the work that then you would then do in order for you to be able to be in two, three or four places at the same time. So, I, 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 Ali, I think the first thing is, you know, when you're thinking about a business, leverage comes to mind and it's yeah. about leverage and it's about scalability. There's only one Ali, you know, how are you going to be in all these places, micromanaging and telling the staff what to do? So, you know, but I think you know that anyway. So it's like good advice. You know, you go to, you know, you go to your best friend and they're giving you advice that you really know, but you need to hear it and remind yourself to say, I need to change. So nothing, you know, we're not going to say anything here, which is that enlightening or innovative that you don't know anyway. So it's not like, you know, I'm selling you anything that you don't know, Ali. You already know this. So you already know the answer. You already know what you're doing. You already know. But what you're doing is you're echoing in your own mind because at the moment you're not comfortable in terms of letting go. So there's an element of emotion there that doesn't want to let go, but but you know the answer. Uh, but it's about how you work out what you need to be doing. And I think that's the difficulties. And that is about investing in systems processing, uh, investing in people around you. And, 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 any, and any business owner, I would say, I mean, you talk about this journey about you know, moving from an employed to self-employed to to uh, entrepreneur, but there's an element of business owner. You know, you know, there's an element of business investor, and you know, yeah. you, so there's a, qu- a quadrant that we may, we, you know, you may be aware of, which is Robert Koyoski's sort of quadrant, where you know, you start off with employed, self-employed, business owner, and business investor. Business investor is about investing in others, investing in, in uh, opportunities, and then you know being in a bit of a coach. A business owner is where you've got maybe one business, but you've got the systems and processes. You may have a role in that business, where the, but the business – so a definition of a business is one that is a profitable enterprise that works without you. So that's where you want to be, ideally, you know, where you can have that time away if need be, you know, because all about all, at the end of the day, it's all about freedom and choice. It's not necessarily about the money. You gave the example about Majid, you know, giving up his uh, uh, he you know his um, uh, professional work uh, in, in terms of his consultancy and the work that he was doing. The reason why he did that necessarily isn't about money, but it's about freedom and what that and, and how do you get and to choice. that choice of how do you get to that position of choice where you know it's your choice as opposed to where you got no choice. That's what we want. You know, we, we want to be in a position where you have the opportunities and your choice might be to work 60 hours, 70 hours, 80 hours, but your choice might then may not may be to change. <laughs> but, and and the, and the reason why you start off working all the hours that, that, that we have is because you have a, a purpose that you're working towards. You know, yeah. that's, what you, that's what we do, you know, to give you that element where you have maybe freedom later. So you put the hours in, but ultimately the driver, you know, you have to have a vision in your own head, the fact that I'm doing this and you're making a sacrifice. Of course yeah. there's a sacrifice. You know, you're giving up time with, you know, family or, you know, leisure time or whatever for a reward. That reward may be monetary, and part of it is monetary, but it's about what money gives you. 
And ultimately, it's about freedom and it's about choice. And I think that's where we are. But in some cases, people get carried away. Yeah. You know, they lose the balance. That's where that's where I think you know they 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 either they either sort of trying to keep up with the Joneses or they they lose their perspective of why they started, what their what their thoughts were, and they lose part of themselves. And that's what is sad for me to hear when you know when you when you see businesses and you and you've you've come across it where you, know, you think why, you know mm. why, you know, where is this coming from? What's your driver? What's your purpose? Yeah. And 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 that's where it gets a little bit, you know. I, I feel uh, some element of empathy. Even I'm not I'm not feeling sorry for people, but you know, you you sort of question yourself and you start thinking, okay, you know. And and sometimes you need that element of looking at looking looking at other people and sort of bringing you back to yourself. Am I on the journey that I wanted to be on, or have I gone to a different destination? Hmm. And do I need to sort of recheck and realign myself? And um, and, I, and, I, and I think that's quite important for us to do that to reflect. And we probably, you know, sometimes we get on, you know, in our own ways. Even though we talk about bandwagons and all the rest of it, but we've got to go back and realign and recheck and 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 reconfigure and, and rework out and prioritize and and really understand that. But and as, um, part, of, as yeah. part of that reflection, it could mean that being uh, self-employed, working for yourself. It's not for you. It's not maybe not the right time for you. It may not be the right circumstances for you, or it just may not be for you. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, people often have this perception that you know, if you're a business owner, you're better off. Actually, that might not be the case. You may be better off having a nine to five job, getting a good salary, having that safety net because of your personality and your. <coughs> And what fits Imagine there's so many, so many people in business who are, who, who, who um, are in, are in, you know, they're, they're in business and they're doing what they're doing, but there's lost opportunity. Mm. They, you know, they're, they're not fulfilling their own opportunity um, mm. for themselves, and they live. They still have got this hope. They're clinging on to certain things, you know, and and I think that's where for me it gets it gets difficult, where the reality check is on there. You know, I, you know, I, you know, we had a, we had a, my father had a shoe shop, and um, uh, and we ran that for 10, 15 years. And what I would say is, uh, you know, I could, I could compare our shoe shop with others, and I would say most people in that area probably would have been better off in some sort of work. You know, but would have been better off even as a, um, as a, as a courier or a driver or in a retail area or any other work or even as a security guard or security officer. It would have been less stress, would have been less worry, and potentially more financial reward. <clears throat> but, mm. but why are they doing it? It's the fear, the fear of failure, the fear that I've, I've gone this path and you know, and and I'm going to make it work. And it's that reality. It, reality doesn't mix with, or the, the the dream doesn't mix with the reality, or the there's still an element of things will get better, but. Mm. Nothing's going to change until something's going to ch something will change, and, and, and there's yeah. no change happening. So how are things going to change? Mm. And I think this is it's very difficult. And, and when when you see business people, this perception that every business owner or ent every entrepreneur is doing well isn't isn't the case at all. It's you're, not the case. Absolutely right. Surprisingly, I mean, coincidentally, even I was at the garage today having my car service, had an oil change and whatnot, and I was speaking to the mechanic, who's a an Asian Pakistani mechanic, and um, he had this perception that every non-Asian was a better business owner, and that was that was just his his perception. And this this guy's a lovely guy, you know. Uh, always enjoy having conversations with him. We talk about lots of random different things, and um, and his his perception has always been that non-Asians are better in business than Asians themselves, and. We ended up having this conversation about choices and life and where what people end up doing with themselves, you know, the way people invest in certain things. Some people don't take the risk. Some people will spend lots of money on certain things, but not spend that money where it should be spent in his view, because that's his view. And it's amazing. It's interesting how this discussion evolved into uh, a discussion about discovering ourselves, discovering oneself. And I kind of 
uh, when we finish the discussion, my parting words on this occasion, I'm sure there'll be loads of other occasions, inshallah, where, where that when when we understand who we are as individuals, what you mentioned clearly early, earlier on about staying in your own lane, you know, when people sometimes divert and then they forget why they started, forget what the motivation was, forget what the intention was. When you discover yourself and you get to know yourself, it, there's a lot of emotional intelligence that comes into play when, yeah. when we're dealing with life. Then if you don't care about what other people think, say, or do. You do what you feel was the right thing for what, you, what was then and what is the right thing for you. And then contentment in life is more easily attained when you do it for the reasons you understand rather than doing it for reasons you don't understand. Um, so that was a that was a very interesting conversation, I thought, because he uh, uh, again uh, has a business, and you know he was talking about business at the same time. It was quite a coincidence. We were. Uh, I think I think the, the, the opposite. Say that again. Is he not one of those Asian business owners that he refers to? So is yeah, he? Yeah. Written, he told you that if you go yeah. to a non-Asian garage, they're better than him. We, we, <laughs> Ali, you, 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 fi you find that where uh, British, British Asians are harder on themselves. Um, he's not British. What you... well, well, he, he is British, he... but he was, he was bo born and bred in Pakistan and he came here in his 20s, I believe. Yeah. Okay. So Asians yeah. generally, I mean, I mean, again, you know, I, I'll say what I said at the beginning. We are generalizing. We're talking from our experience and, and, our, and, yeah, our, sure. and our viewpoint. And, 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 um, and, when I come across Asian business people, they're, they're, uh, I find that they're not aware of all the, all, you know, what what uh, what people outside yeah. their immediate network is doing. Yeah. You know, they might know exactly what their direct competitor is doing, which is possibly yeah. you know a relative of theirs or a friend of theirs or whatever yeah. the case is, but they won't Usually. know exactly where where you know who what else is doing, and they don't know necessarily what what you know what's what's new at the. So they're, they're not thinking in terms of innovation improvement. What they what they've got, what what drives them is fair, fair mm. in terms of how they are with competitors, but also fair in terms of their staff and their people around them. And they've got this fear constantly in terms of somebody else is going to come in and take something from me. And there's all this fear of loss that they have, and that seems to be their driver predominantly. Into and, and fear the fact happen. that or fear you know, of what other people might think. Look or, or fear the fact that you know my staff aren't working, or you know, or <laughs> they're, 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 they're looking at the CV CCTV. You know, they've got their phone out, looking at their CCTV. What my staff doing? You know, what, what's he done here? Why is he not working? Why is he standing there? You know, uh, you know, watching his phone or something else or whatever. And this is constant on constantly on their mind, and it's picking these things up, nitpicking, picking these things up as opposed to. What can I do to change? What can I do to improve? What do I need to be doing? And, you know, you talk about working on the business, working in the business, mm. but, you know, the best use of my I, my time is always working on the people who are working in the business. Uh, it's not, and, and, and then secondly, it's working away from the business in terms of planning, maybe talking to other people, learning from other pe people through networking, maybe looking at seminars, being open-minded in terms of, you know, what can I learn from that? And then it's about actually doing the day job, the nitty gritty, the detail and and, 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 and so forth. And, and again, be, being conscious with your own time, where are we spending our own time? What's the most effective use of our time? Um, but there are certain prejudices, there's no doubt. If you go outside, uh, you know, you'll see the indigenous community think that any any British Asian is an is an entrepreneur, or they're more mainly entrepreneurs, and they're leading in in business. That's not necessarily the case. There's a lot of them. There's mm. definitely quite a few of them, and they may be dominating in certain areas. Yeah. But we're not necessarily the movers and shakers in business. But there's a perception for people that you know, and and and, and that's not necessarily what the facts say or what the stats say. Uh, but is, there is a perception that predominantly Asians are dominating the business uh, sector and industry and, and the certain areas, and it may be in these, uh, you know, in, you know. They'll, but it's it's not necessarily what's the reality in terms of the figures. But mm. you know, going back to the the point that uh, you know, which are which are we which which we started off with in terms of entrepreneur and entrepreneurialism. 
I, I still I believe that you know you can be employed and have an entrepreneurial mindset. It is a mindset. Yeah. It's an attitude. It's an approach. It's it's uh it's your philosophy, you know, and, and it's about you, uh, and you and you and, and we've got to go back to that. And you can't have you can you can employ people who have got that mindset and and are entrepreneurial, and they can come in and help you grow your business, which is what you know, which is what we want to try and enable. We want to nurture that opportunity. Mm-hmm. They may not be there for life, and and just as no job is for life anymore. And people will will sometimes come and go, and you know sometimes when employing people who we know, you know, are doing this job to go to, you know, because they're because they're students or they're in this job, but we know that they're not necessarily going to be here in ten years time. But we've got to be comfortable in terms of letting go. You know, we've got too much fear in terms of you know sharing knowledge, sharing information because we think. You know they're gonna take this information and start start up as competitors, or you know, or we, we don't invest in them because we think potentially they they're, they're not they're not the right people. So our intention we've got to go back to ourselves, and we've got to have a I you know again forgive me for saying this, but we've got to have a clear clean heart and the right intentions, and everything starts with the intention, intention Absolutely. in everything, and and you've got to have the right intention. And regard, regardless of the person, and, and the right intention, whether it comes to business, business transactions, the right intention with the way you're working with your staff, the way you're serving the clients, the right intention goes throughout all the dynamics of running a business. Um, so I, I 100%, you know, you don't need to ask for forgiveness for mentioning that. I think is it's a pivotal point, in fact, a foundational point of running an ethical business, yeah, yeah. And, and again, you know having the key team around you, not just about the employed people, but having advisors around you, you know, having people that you can lean on, people that are peers that are genuinely supportive of you and, and having that support network, you know, whether whether it's professionals or whether it's, you know, you know, uncle or coach or whatever, whether it's your know, mentor or you know, whatever it is, it's about being able to grow yourself and if you're not in a growth mindset yourself and you're not open, then it's going to be difficult for your business to grow. There's going to be an element where there will be a, a limitation. You know, either you're going to either you're going to worry with you know you're going to have fear of worry and you know and, and that's going to that's going to uh, that, that that's going to hopefully not hopefully but hopefully not um, lead to health issues or it's going to be an element where there's too much frustration negativity and you put your hands up and say well actually it's not for me or you know you move out but i think we've got to start with ourselves we've got to start with our own approach and our own sort of thinking and how are we growing as people you know you guys have been on a journey and you've spoken to many people and you know whether and i'm sure uh, uh and even with yourselves you know when you know when you're thinking out loud there's an element where it just might just change your thinking a little bit you know, you're going on a particular path that might just touch you and then change the uh, the direction a little bit. And I think we just got to be open to that. Otherwise, you're just cocooned and closed. If we speak about well, path, um, yeah. and perhaps yeah. address slightly yeah. on like, grassroots yeah. or the academic route. So when you're going through the educational system or going through school, do you think there's enough emphasis on the entrepreneurial opportunities or you know, business itself. Do you think, because I always saw it as a bit of a production line for employees, you know, school, colleges, universities, they they churn out good employees, don't they? Like, almost like robots. I, I, th- I, think, I think there's an element of, you know, what, what are the skill sets and traits they're, they're teaching you? And a lot of it is about entrepreneurialism or going out and setting a business and so forth. But it's about, you know, giving people ultimately awareness of themselves and ultimately, you know, you're talking about emotional intelligence. What you're learning generally is, you know, this is part of your learning and development. You've got to start with learning yourself and being more conscious and more aware. And then you start talking about your skill sets and hopefully looking at improving those skill sets, whether that's, you know, if you if you think about what are the current skill sets that, you know, are... Are, are 
are things that you know are important for us now in terms of our business, they're not necessarily the skill sets that were there maybe 10 years ago or 15 years ago. But, but it's about our ability to adapt. The reason why somebody might take on a graduate is because it's not necessarily the knowledge that they have, but it's the fact that they've learned certain things and you believe that they have the certain skill sets that they can pick more information out and they're constantly being able to sort of, you can stretch and challenge them. You know, and, you can, and that's what it's about. And it's, it's not about cramming people with knowledge, but, it's, but it is about giving them the skill sets to adapt and change. You know, there's certain things that, you know, we're constantly learning. We're learning, learning at 11 o'clock and applying at 12 o'clock. You know, Majid is a key example where you go to YouTube as an example and you, you learn on demand, but you apply it then and there. And the reason why you can do that is because you've got the skill sets. It's not because you've got the knowledge. Academia is about knowledge and the pursuit of knowledge. It's not necessarily the application of it and being able to have the skill sets to, to be able to stretch. You know, in most cases, Ali, I'll say, you know, you can possibly, if you focus on something, learn in any area because you've got the core skill sets. And one of those, you know, one of those skill sets, I mean, that's, a, you know, you've got to look at your core skill sets and you've got the ability to learn, learn, unlearn, and relearn. That's a big thing. Yeah, and right now it's more important than it ever has been to unlearn and relearn after you've learned something initially because... Uh, that mindset alone is is uh, is quite prohibitive in some people. I've noticed that when they don't have that willingness to unlearn, fixed in, their, fixed in their ways, Majid. I mean, there's a lot of people who are fixed in their ways and fixed in their approach, yeah. And, yeah. and what they yeah. feel that they have, they know, is the reality. And the reality might change. And you've got to sometimes take a whiteboard type of approach and say, "Well, wipe that out, and let me look at it with a fresh pair of perspective, fresh pair of eyes." And I think this is where this is where this ability to unlearn and relearn mm. is absolutely vital. Um, yeah. uh, so this learning ability, what, what does that mean? And, and I think that's what it is. You know, what we learned or what I learned, you know, 30 years ago, I'm not applying, mm. but what it's done is it's about, it's about, it's, it's stretched and, 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 and made me out to a certain level of where I am today. And I think that's where it is. It's about the pursuit of, being able to grow and you know is that person got the skill sets where you can stretch and challenge there are sort of people and i've come across them where you feel that you know they've reached their limitation and it's hard for me to say this but you mm. know you will come across mm. people where you know either they haven't got the motivation they haven't got the ability they haven't got the willingness right to to uh, uh, the willingness so it's an yeah. element of skill and will. Aptitude. Yeah. You know, the interesting thing is you could have two people going to the same university, attending the same course, but when they come out, they'll produce different results. And it's not down to necessarily what they've learned on the course. It's, as Saf, you've, you mentioned, it's how, you, how they've applied it. But not only that, there are a lot of other variables we can't overlook is in terms of, what they've personally had to experience through life for their thinking to be applied in a certain way as well. If you've had somebody who's gone through a pretty hard life and they've worked genuinely hard to get to that particular university or attend that particular course, or they're rather than taking a boss and not being able to afford it, they've got the motivation to walk there because they can't, you know, that drive cannot be substituted by anything else you know if somebody might have it all and given a place uh because it's local to them or whatever the case might be they might have a a, a car journey to the the, the 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 lectures every day and you know the lunch money paid for them and everything we their drive might be slightly different i'm not saying it'll be any less it may not be but the fact that somebody independently is making an effort to want to change and make changes is has that willingness that drive the hard work the ethics the investment you know all that you we just can't overlook that as well because you can attend the same course as someone else but produce completely different results that's going to be on aptitude it's going to be on attitude yeah. Yeah. all these things are going to affect the the overall outcome 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and 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 again, you know, you 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 spend time with people, and and what you find is there's certain people who energy, uh, the they just zap your energy, and there's others energy who, vampires. You know, they're, they're, yeah, you know, they're energy vampires, and there's others there's, there's, who uh, so energize you, you know, they're they're the ones who sort of you know uh, give you that push, they energize you, and then there's others who just drain you. Oh, and, they're the energy and, vampires. The first one that yeah, they're the motivators. <laughs> The energy vampires will just drain you. They suck the uh, energy out of you, yeah. Like everything is a burden, everything's a problem, and it's that glass half full, yeah. them half, yeah. half empty thing, and you know what, the, the you know what, blame the government, blame this and so forth, and and, and it's that mindset, you know, are, you, are they above the line or below the line? Is it about blame? Is it about excuses? You know, is it, you know, you know, are they are they excuse makers or excuse takers? Or, yeah, or you know, or are they in denial? There's certain people who are in denial. Yeah. They, they 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 they're they're just not seeing the picture that that's out there. Even, you know, it's like it's like you you know you've got a you've got a photograph in front of you, but you're seeing something completely different. And they they're, they're in that illusion or the denial. But again, going back to uh, you know this ownership, accountability, responsibility, a lot of it is about again you go back to our approach, our mindset, our philosophy of thinking. You know, you know, are we? Do you want? To, you know, are we about goal getting, goal setting, or is it about you know going with the ride, going with the flow? Uh, mm. There's certain people who you know who just have that approach. You know, who just don't, don't just don't they don't just don't change their approach for anything. You know, and you want to and say, well, actually, you know what? How how are you so relaxed? You know, you know yeah. how are you so relaxed and how are you so laissez faire, where potentially there's an opportunity there and so forth. And people think uh, differently. And you and and you know we can't. I I have this feel belief that you can't change anybody unless they want to change themselves. Hundred you know, percent. I, I can't change. You know, a, a, any member of. The team or whatever people, I'm gonna, you know, people have this thing. I'm going to change you. I'm going to change him. You can't unless the person wants to do that themselves. Unless they have that desire, the obsession. It's like with weight. You know, if I, you know, with my, you know, if I, if I want to actually lose weight, if I'm obsessed about it, if I'm thinking about it, then I can do it. Unless Ali, you know, exactly the same thing last week whilst we were driving back from our episode. He goes, if I wanted a six pack, I could have a six pack. The fact of course is, you can. I don't want it bad enough. <laughs> Because he's made he's made an informed choice, it, yeah. and he doesn't want to put the sacrifice in to actually get that because it doesn't mean anything for him. It's not, it's, not, it's not a priority. He's got other priorities, and that's that's not his priority. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And hours past the first We have come uh, towards the end of our show, and uh, you know what? It's a fascinating talk. I think this one could go on for a while. Um, I mean, we we touched briefly upon the fact that it's been a very testing year for a lot of people. Um, you know, there's pros and cons. Obviously, some people have had it rough. Um, others have flourished. It, you know, it's just sometimes it's the way the cookie crumbles. Sometimes it's whether you can think outside the box. Um, whether you see everything around you changing, but you still carry on trying to do the same thing. It's like you wouldn't dress the same uh, on a hot day at the beach than you would, you know, at the North Pole. So, I mean, what's your advice to people out there today just looking at the elements, the environment, the the economy, you know, and trying to get their head around it? What what, what would you say to them? I would, I would echo what you've said, Ali. I think there's, there, there, there are people who've thrived. There are people who are just surviving and there are people and businesses that are, are diving that's mindset. That's their approach as well, and it's about some people's uh, attitude and approach, and and they feel, and and people worry about things that they can't control, and that's that's the first thing. There's certain things that, you know, it's a you know, this fear. Fear is a you know, it it, it just it you know, is our biggest biggest obstacle that we've got to overcome. And what is what is fear? Fear is the false expectation that something's going to happen. Even, and it's, a lot of it is about the future, and this is going to happen or this is going to happen, and that worry disables us from doing anything. And you know, we don't take action, we don't control the things that we need to control, and we don't make the decisions that we need to make at the right time in the right manner. So this is about informed choices. This is about clarity of thought, 
and, and getting away from all the noise that's out there. There's a lot of noise. And this noise, unfortunately, disables us from having that clear thought. Mm -hmm. uh, unless you can think yourself out of the problem or, or you know, or think in a way to to really get get the get the problem, the, the problem that you're working on. Sometimes we're not working on the problem that it is the problem. We're not working on the problem. We're working on something that's not the problem or the fear of some something else. And that's yeah, your yeah. biggest obstacle. And I think you know we we don't see a reality for what it is. And 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 you've got to somehow be able to clear the decks a little bit. You know, this is where this mindfulness comes in. This is where yeah, that clarity yeah. of thought comes in. And and sometimes we can do that in our own way. And sometimes we need to be able to talk it through to somebody else. And and I find the best way that I you know up, overcome obstacles is is actually if I can talk it through to with somebody. And you know, and the person can you know, and sometimes they're giving you things you know as I, you know said earlier on, Ali, you know you know giving you advice or even suggestions that you probably know, but you need to hear it, work it out, and and then really action. And it's about action but the right action in the right way that and, and and understanding why you why you're doing that in an informed manner and i think for me that's absolutely vital and and whatever the issue is whatever you in and and there are certain things that are not in your control but yeah. what can you do about them exactly you know, so this and, is and the first episode of 2021 and yes. we've come to the close of our first episode it's been an hour already and i can't believe it's been an hour yes i know maybe we should have a part two at some stage um so as your parting words what advice would you give for 2021 i think see the see the opportunity in everything and um, but but stay focused entrepreneurs business owners uh they lose focus they start seeing the shiny shiny in something else and they move too quickly in some cases stay focused on what you're doing but also real, real, realize that nothing's going to change until something's going to change. And either you change or you're going to be changed. Mm, deep. Excellent. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Salfraz Ali, look him up um, if you haven't done already. Um, and that brings us a close to our uh, episode of 11th episode of season two of Beardos Media. Uh, this was all about who do you work for? And I think next one as a follow-up, Ali, it should be, what do you work for? So maybe that could be a follow-up at some stage. Uh, keep your eyes peeled, log on, and do uh, subscribe to our social media handles at Beardos Media. You can follow Saf at Safraz Ali. Um, in the meantime, enjoy the rest of your week. Have a safe time ahead, and we will join you this time again next week on Tuesday at 7 p.m. Have a good one. Sure. Thank you.